Hiya, it's me again, back in my quiet spot. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video, but I only like to do them when I've got something really to talk about, and this should be interesting. Um, as you know, my previous videos, they were connected with the Brave New World and, and Aldous Huxley. Um, and this ties into it. Um, because as you may or may not know, in a Brave New World, it was a scientific dictatorship, and... Um, people who were mostly clones in the lower classes and the upper classes they had the right to pass on their eggs and sperm and they were donors I think as well as having natural births they were donors to the clones <coughs> that made the clones and um, I think that there is a drug uh, amongst our society right now that is or could play a vital role in the reality of a brave new world um, it's been kind of low-key um, in, the, in the past, um, up into about the year 2000. Um, this may be controversial to some people, most of my videos maybe are. Um, and I don't mean to uh, stereotype or put down certain people. Um, but the title of this video is Steroids and a Brave New World. Now, I'm mainly talking about anabolic steroids, um, but sex hormones in general, um, really. Now, anabolic steroids really were, I reckon, pretty much low key up into the two th uh, yeah, mid 2000s, do you think? Um, when I say that, I mean. Their main use was for bodybuilding, and professional bodybuilding, anabolic steroids. Um, I've done a little bit of research on this. I mean, the bodybuilders in the 80s, 70s, 60s, and, and going back probably into the 50s, they uh, were a, a, a closely knit group of people. There weren't very many of them. Bodybuilding was considered very strange, odd. Um, it wasn't popular at all, so according to what I've heard, these guys would train into a gym, they train in a gym, they would train hard, they would release a lot of their genetic potential, and then they would get into a group, a small clique of people that knew how to get hold of, of this stuff, and then they would be introduced to, it, introduced to it if they were physically advanced enough and if they wanted to compete, and that's just what it was used for. Um, now, I think, compared to then, steroids have become mainstream for men, um, your, your competitive bodybuilder doesn't just use them, it's your average guy in the office that wants a better physique, your, your, um, that wants to look good on the beach, that wants to look good naked, a lot of these people are taking them. So it's introduced into the mainstream, it's becoming slowly more acceptable for people. Um, but why is that? Um, because most people will argue, well, it's for guys that want to build better bodies. Well, the pill was introduced to, for women in the 60s and they were told it was for feminism and uh, independence but I think that's there's a different agenda there as well, the same for steroids <clears throat> so in a scientific dictatorship um, you, would, you would have the state uh, decide whether you reproduce or not um, you, you would have to prove that you're good enough for them, you're submissive enough. And um, now, but if you could already do that, if you could already reproduce, then you wouldn't need to, would you? Um, and this connects to um, something else as well. Um, all of the uh, artificial chemicals that have been put into uh, products, uh, mainly in plastics, uh, the main one is, I believe, is bisphenol A and it's put into cosmetic makeups for women and this lowers men's testosterone, it helps block it or lower it it lowers our sperm count, fertility and stops us being fully functional men and apparently we have been bombarded with this stuff for decades I mean nearly over a hundred years or a hundred years so we maybe now are seeing the repercussions of it because they say that men's uh, sperm counts are plummeting that's European men mainly um, another thing that this can tie into is this whole transgender, transgender agenda. 
Um, because these people may, not all of them, I mean, some argue that they're me mentally confused, but they probably are, because if this is a case of chemical manipulation, then um, they are, they feel they're neither male nor female because of the um, damage that's been done to their hormones. At the same time, the mainstream media is saying that there's no such thing as a gender, <laughs> that uh, people are, can choose their own sex. It, the whole gender thing is an illusion, which is a load of rubbish because it's biologically proven. Uh, otherwise, they're saying that science and evolution, that what we're taught at school doesn't make sense. So, yeah, a child can choose their sex, and the adults uh, can decide to uh, put their child for a sex change on their NHS. The NHS is paying for this. Um, there's absolutely no problem with that. Um, but what do you need for a sex change? Apart from uh, being castrated and having your genitals <laughs> made to look like those of the opposite sex, what else do you need? You need hormones. Because uh, you, you don't have your own. If, you, if you're having a sex change, you need the opposite hormone. So it's got to be done synthetically. So steroids, basically. You need steroids. Um, in uh, a, a very long-winded series of videos I did um, for several hours, I uh, spoke on um, a book written by one of the Huxley brothers. Um, I think it was called The Impact of Science on Society. Um, and they were openly talking about the experiments they did on animals. And one that rings a bell was the uh, experiment they did with um, tadpoles, I think. And they, um, they cut out their pituitary gland. Um, or one of those glands, I think it's a pituitary gland, and they uh, fed it back to them in controlled doses. And what they found is if they fed them the full dose, I believe they would grow into a, uh, a normal frog. They would go through that met natural metamorphosis. But if they cut the dose, they could kind of leave them in between the stage so they could uh, leave them half developed and then uh, they wouldn't grow anymore. So they realised that they can have absolute control over these subjects hormones <coughs> and, and you know in regulating them um, that is very key because this book ultimately was talking about how we can use humans we can do this to human subjects in order to have a scientific dictatorship um, and that is absolute key I've got my notes here so um, So as a scientist, yeah, in a scientific government, you would control hormones. And this not only would shape the behaviour of people, but it would decide whether or not they are going to be in this world or not, that they're going to reproduce. Um, so, I think that um, steroids, in the end, anabolic steroids right now... Um, really is kind of a it's kind of a shady subject it's much like marijuana um, you could you can have them for your own private purposes but you can't supply them um, so it's a grey area really it's not really illegal I mean some countries you can get them from a doctor I know I'm sure in Thailand you can just go over in places you can just buy them over the counter you can buy them heaps of stuff um, here in the UK is a lot more difficult than in other countries and obviously and if you're caught supplying them it's, it's definitely a criminal offence um, but I think that 